Yeah. Wanga Arta Bangangan and Naka Bangawi, Wanga Adaka Aran Natama, Naka Kirsten Nuga Kwas, Wanga Kiwarami. So I come from St. Lawrence Island. Um, it's an island that's between Alaska and Russia. Um, and some of us can actually see Russia from our houses. Um, and we've been through several waves of colonization. European whalers came in the 1800s and they decimated our whale population. Whales have sustained us for thousands of years as have the walrus and many other sea mammals. Um, and this coupled with the eruption of Krakatoa, which caused two straight years of winter in Alaska, caused a famine that wiped out 99% of our population on the island. And so we repopulated our island by inviting um, people who are of the same culture and language from Indian Point over in Siberia. And so we have very close ties and relationships to people um, who are in Siberia today. And as you can imagine, those relationships have been strained over time um, as our oppressive governments have been in conflict. We also uh, have experienced a lot of pollution. The Bering Strait, where the island sits, is one of two thoroughways to the Arctic. And if you don't know this, all pollutants travel to the north. And so they travel through those two thoroughways. We're, we're some of the most polluted people in the world. Um, and this is also because they built a military base on our island during the Cold War. We're a super fund site. This base was large enough to sustain 200 troops for two years. They had a bowling alley, they had a movie theater, and when it was time for them to leave, they were instructed to take a backpack, cut the lines, and leave. So they cut the fuel lines and they spilt heavy metal solvents and all sorts of pollutants onto our land, which seeped into a lagoon. And today, um, those who are there at Northeast Cape, it's not a question of if you're going to get cancer, it's when. And so we live in a cancer cluster. So what I take from that is global history has shown that our bodies are used as sacrifice zones to ensure things are safe for white bodies and white communities in the name of colonialism and capitalism. I come from a land with a history of peoples who have always had things done to us, on us, and for us without our permissions. Experimentation and poisoning by the military and government, we live in a cancer cluster and are considered some of the most polluted people in the world. And now climate mitigation like geoengineering testing is being attempted by the academic institutions driven and backed by billionaires and fossil fuel interests. I am always reminded of the words of my colleague, Aklasia Kamasuk. Climate change solutions are not those preventing sea ice loss, mitigating sea, sea level rise, or refracting sun rays, rays back into at the atmosphere. What Western science is focusing on are the effects of climate change, running to the next emergency, attempting mitigation, not meeting the threshold, and starting the cycle all over again. Anyone who is in good relationship will tell you that solutions must be local and community led. They do not lie halfway across the globe, but in your relationship with your neighbor, local organizations, and most importantly, the indigenous peoples on whose land you reside. <laughs> Climate change, mass die off of biodiversity is not possible without designating certain lands and peoples as sacrifice zones. The ability for us to over emit so grossly is due to the treatment of BIPOC communities as less than human. This is also true with geoengineering. Already geoengineering tests have been conducted or attempted on our lands, water, skies, soils, and forests without free prior and informed consent. When Western experts talk about geoengineering, they generally have two categories, carbon removal and solar radiation management or solar radiation mitigation. Under these umbrellas, there are many forms of technology, but I only have time to share about a few specifics. Carbon dioxide removal includes carbon capture and storage, direct air capture, bioenergy carbon capture and storage, and ocean fertilization. Carbon capture and storage supposedly sucks carbon at source, condenses it into a liquid form, and transfers it to a site for sequestration. Carbon is extremely corrosive. It only takes a little bit of moisture to help it eat away at the container it's quote unquote sequestered in, and when it comes out, it expands into a gas. 
One such occurrence happened in Sarkosha, Mississippi in August 2021. People in the area continue to experience health impacts from this to this day. Carbon sequestration is an effective and a health hazard. The infrastructure needed for this techno fix is not possible economically or physically. And no CCS project has ever met its targets. Yet our governments and fossil fuel companies continue to invest in this technology um, because of carbon credits and net zero. 93% of the carbon captured in the United States alone is used for enhanced oil recovery, where they flush out nearly, deployed, nearly depleted oil wells with carbon to get more oil faster. Russ George, who has run many failed businesses and schemes in ocean fertilization, spoke to the Alaska Senate about dumping millions of tons of iron ore into the ocean off of the coast of Kodiak. The last time his experiment happened, the number of toxic algal blooms increased, causing shellfish poisonings in Alaska. Solar radiation management um, or mitigation includes stratospheric aerosol injection, marine cloud brightening, micro bubbles, painting white surfaces white, um, and many other things. The theory is that you can reflect sunlight back into space because the sun, of course, the source of all life is the problem, not extractive industry. <clears throat> so, one of these projects uh, used to be called Ice 9-11. It's not now called Arctic Ice Project. They deployed football fields worth of synthetic silica hollow glass microspheres um, to attempt to thicken the ice in the Arctic without the free prior and informed consent of the tribal governments and community members in Utkarvik. This project was founded by Leslie Field, who had spent decades before this contracting with Chevron and working for HP. Scopex of Harvard University attempted to deploy weather balloon testing over Sami territory without free prior and informed consent of the indigenous peoples. The project is funded by Bill Gates and would support research for a technology meaning to spray millions of tons of sulfur dioxide into the stratosphere. Their own computer simulations show that doing this would disrupt monsoon cycles, cause drought in the Amazon rainforest, and would disrupt crops. For instance, the US wouldn't be able to grow corn, Japan wouldn't be able to grow rice. The Sami have stood up to say no to this project, and now scholars such as David Keith, John Moore, and Matthias Reese of the Carr Center for Human Rights claim that this is unethical for the Sami to do so. The Arctic is supposedly the most strategic location for this testing. They perceive that the benefit of the Western world once again supersedes the rights of indigenous peoples and ways of being. The privately funded tech bro horror, known as Make Sunsets, funds their technology by selling quote unquote cooling credits, which uses uh, home brewed sulfur, sulfur dioxide and releases it in weather balloons. When they did this test in Mexico, their government banned outdoor solar geoengineering testing. So now they're doing it here in the US where they're not protecting us out of hotel rooms and public parks. They know the sound arguments against the release of the poison and yet their arrogance allows them to continue. The existence of racism means that Western trained scientists and Western institutions who often have the power to develop climate, cl cl climate policy believe that indigenous peoples are simple-minded and don't understand science. It means they also have an unconscious bias toward Western values and Western priorities. Their internalized supremacy rooted beliefs <clears throat> lead them to argue that indigenous peoples don't have the right to say no to geoengineering testing, even if it's done on our own lands, um, waters, bodies, and air. Their internalized superiority leads them to sincerely believe that their interests are global interests and should therefore supersede the rights of indigenous communities to sovereignty, to sovereignty and free prior and informed consent. We are here to tell you that as indigenous peoples, we have an inherent understanding that the commodification of life has failed us, including that which is permitted through carbon offsets, biodiversity offsets, and market-based mechanism schemes used to prolong the fossil fuel era. We have an inherent understanding that testing single dimensional research areas like feasibility and short term ingestion toxicity in laboratories is simplistic. 
You cannot predict how large-scale deployment of carbon reduction and solar radiation management will impact, impact complex interdependent ecosystems. Not involving those who are among these ecosystems is not only disrespectful and racist, it is foolish and dangerous. Testing whether a material will thicken the ice does not consider how spreading materials over 100,000 square kilometers will impact the life system within that ice, which depends on sunlight and the delicate freeze melt cycle of the Arctic. Indigenous peoples are not permitted to give adequate intervention on the subject within the framework of our own belief systems. We are made through scores, we wade through scores of academics, institutions, and policymakers who try to suck us into irrelevant debates, such as the pros and cons of geoengineering. We are not here to debate this. We are here to assert the relevance of our own cosmovision, our own science, and our own tribal sovereignty and rights. These policymakers and academics have no understanding of their own histories and patterns of violating land rights, tribal sovereignty, and our right to true consent. We have protected 80% of Earth's biodiversity with our blood. Geoengineering is a sign of industrial desperation. It's the swan song of an extraction-based economy which has always been doomed to fail. Geoengineering testing is a form of unjust deployment and experimentation on indigenous peoples without their free prior and informed consent. The deployment of such technologies at scale could only ever be a form of testing and the impacts would be cataclysmic. The only true answer is to heal our relationship with each other and the sacredness of mother earth and capitalism, colonialism, which are based in the commodification of life. Yeah.